Welcome back YouTubers, this is Omar from Your Main Condition. And today, I'm gonna give you guys a little overview of the IDW Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles collection. What's inside of them and the content that they hold. And again, these are the hardcover editions published by IDW. There might be a little bit of a spoilers, but not too much. I'll try to refrain from that. <laughs> The reason I wanted to do this video was because I feel like most people overlook comics like this and Transformers because they look at it and see that it's based on a kid's franchise. But if you're thinking that, you're really missing out on some of the best comics being written today. There have been many incarnations of the Ninja Turtles. It all started with the original comic book, which are reprinted here. These are the original Eastman and Laird comics, but these only focus on the Eastman and Laird books. If you guys want me to do an overview of those, I will. I'm mainly focusing on the IDW stuff. From there, there came the original cartoon, and then we had the original movies, and then we had the 2003 relaunch series. These are characters that have also crossed over with the Power Rangers. And then we've got the new movies, which we don't really talk about. And then the new CG series in 2013. But then we've got another series coming up. So Ninja Turtles has always been part of our lives. Not only in television and movies, they've also been reimagined in the comic books. From the original, then you had the adventure comics based on the cartoon. You had them appear in Usagi Ojimbo. You had them appear with Batman. Not only have they teamed up with Batman once, but they've also teamed up with the animated Batman. You had the Image series, which wasn't really that well liked. You had the Dreamwave series. You have the comic based on the new cartoon. And now you've got the IDW books, which is what I'm going to show you guys. So the first thing you probably notice is the size comparison. These are the original comics by Eastman and Lair, like I mentioned before, the black and white ones. And these are the new IDW runs. Now, they're smaller in size, but they're still bigger than your average trade paperback. So it's probably about the size of an oversized hardcover from DC or Marvel. As tall as an omnibus, not as thick, obviously. The price range is $50, but you can get them a lot cheaper. So let's look inside of them. First of all, yes, the Eastman and Laird. There are two versions of this. This is the black and white one, the original way it was printed. And now they have a color version. Yeah, so it's just a little different angle. And the original artwork here by Eastman and Laird. Of course the new IDW stuff. One thing I do want to make clear before I start this review and overview is that these IDW books are a completely different universe. They're not a continuation of the original Mirage Studio, Ninja Turtles, or for that matter, any Ninja Turtle comic books that have come before. These can also be purchased in trade paperback if you ever do want to check these out. So let's focus more on these books first. Um, they are printed in color, and this is in the not in the publishing order, but the order that IDW suggests reading them. One thing I really enjoy about this new series is the new origin story. So while the U still plays a part of their origin, and of course, Hamato Yoshi and Roko Saki were still enemies, this book is more about reincarnation and how these characters have existed before in the past and they have been reborn in new bodies just happen to be turtles and a rat. Their origin also includes the red bandanas as they started off in the original comic books, but then it's slowly explained why they wear the red bandanas and how they eventually graduate to their color bandanas. And I love, as I mentioned before, the whole mystical aspect about reincarnation. I think it's pretty cool that Donnie still refuses to believe in it. Like he believes in the mutagen giving them life, but refuses to believe in reincarnation because that just sounds ridiculous. And I know it does, but by the time you get through reading at least volume one, you, you will learn to accept and love that part of the origin. And I have to say so far, this is probably my favorite incarnations of the Ninja Turtles. I really, really like the origin. It makes me care about the characters a little bit more to know that they suffered such a tormented past. And as you can see, the artwork varies in the volume one. Um, it goes from okay to really, really damn good. I'll just flip through here while I talk about the quality. This is, by the way, my first volume is the very first printing, which had some issues. Apparently the binding came apart really easy in the first printing. So if you're buying it used, make sure you ask which version it is. Mine, I guess I just got lucky, mine has 
stood the test of time because I've opened it and reread these quite a few times. I haven't let my kids read these yet because there are, is some kind of strong language in here. So probably wait till they get a little bit older. Just flip through here as I talk. So yeah, I really like the origins of their characters. I think it's very unique. And yes, Splinter will always be fighting Shredder. So I didn't want to show my volume one as far as this spine, but here's what the normal spines look like. So that's pretty good. It's got good sewn binding on these. Very well put together, lays flat. Each volume has a character on the front. The spine is a different color, as you could probably tell earlier. And then the full character in the back with the contents of the book. And this is moving on to volume two. This collects, like I mentioned earlier, all the micro series and the ongoing series in the order that the editor suggests reading them. And I think it's the perfect reading order, honestly. Because sometimes with the series, there was a micro series or a one shot that you didn't know when to read. And I think they fit perfectly as well as they could in these, including flashbacks or crossovers with say, the Ghostbusters. Two. Yes, April O'Neil is back. She plays a prominent role in the origin of the Ninja Turtles, Casey Jones. You get familiar characters, and then you also get new characters like Hob, which is the cat with one eye that kind of forms his own new animals later on. So far, we've gotten Raph, Leo, and Donnie as far as the original turtles on the covers. I think people have been complaining about where's Mikey, but don't worry, he will be in Collection Volume 7. I don't mind the characters that they've chosen because they play a prominent role within the books. Yeah, we even get some issues with the original artwork by Kevin Eastman, so that's pretty cool. And even Lair jumps in there from time to time to help out with some of the covers and things like that. One thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that each one of these hardcovers, because IDW is phenomenal at this, Comes with a ribbon. They don't have dust jackets, but man, this bookmark ribbon goes a long way. And they're all color coordinated based on who, what the spine is or who's on the cover. There's some more of that great artwork. This is Hob, the character I was talking about. By the time you get to volumes three and four, the artwork is just some of my favorite. I believe Sophie Campbell is one of my favorite artists now. She can draw a mean turtle. Oh, yeah, and from time to time you'll see familiar characters with new characters and you will learn to love the new characters too because they are pretty badass. Getting the spine, this is Donnie. I won't flip through too much of volumes five and six mainly because there's some kind of bad spoilers things that happen in them and it will give way too much away. So I will try to keep this review spoiler free. I gave you a little bit info about what the origin is like, but I don't think that's too much of a spoiler. I think you'll still be able to enjoy the books. You have guest artists too that do the covers like Walter Simonson. This is the April O'Neil cover. She kind of looks like Squirrel Girl on my cover. Actually, I find her character pretty interesting. This is the Hob and then Mutant Animals I was talking about. He's got his own team. And I love the fact that they collect the other IDW crossovers within the book because here is the Ghostbusters crossover. The four issue miniseries. So I hope they keep doing this, much like the Transformer books, which I plan to do an overview of those. Yeah, that's some amazing artwork, yeah, but... I'm not going to lie, volume one is a little bit to get hard to get through, especially the first half. But once you push yourself through those, especially if you get the hardcover, you will enjoy the rest of the book, I guarantee it. By the time you get to the origin of the characters and the new villains that appear, you will just keep flipping through it and want to pick up the rest. That is the one bad thing I can say about these is you won't want to put these down once you start reading them. And this is the latest volume that has come out. This is volume six. And like I said, Volume 7 will have Mikey. And this is, of course, focusing on Shredder. Like I uh, mentioned earlier, I'm not going to flip through much. Th 
through the book, but here's your table of contents, which is found in every issue, who the artist is, who the writer is, and like I said, Kevin Eastman with Tom Waltz as his co-writer and co-creator of this new series. You get used to the rotating artists because some of them handle the micro series, some of them handle the annual, some of them handle the free comic book day. Everything is included in these wonderful books. And I strongly suggest picking at least volume one up. Like I said the retail price for these is 50 bucks, but totally worth it. Especially if you can get it at a pretty big discount through either in stock trades or Amazon. Volume six also collects the Casey and April O'Neill mini series. Yeah. Like I said, it's all collected in here. And while Eastman does most of the writing, there are other guest writers on it that do these books that usually focus on the micro series. Well, that's it. That was pretty much what I wanted to show everybody. I hope I did a good job showcasing the books and what they're about and didn't give too much spoilers away. And as I mentioned, if you want me to do an overview of the original ones, I'd be more than happy to, to show you the content of those books. Those are laid out a little bit different. And probably sometime next week, I will do a Transformers Spotlight on the newest IDW hardcovers that have come out. So I hope you check those out. Subscribe to the channel if this is your first time watching and you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that like button. And don't forget to check out our weekly show that comes out every Thursday where we talk about comic books, anime, manga, video games, action figures. Again, this is Omar. Thank you very much for watching. I have no witty way of ending this video because I definitely am not going to say Cowabunga.